Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for May 11, 2011, and now the news. But there sure is not good news. Toyota just reported a 77% drop in net profit for the January through March quarter. The devastating earthquake two months ago today and the strong value of the Japanese yen are to blame. In fact, the situation so bad the company did not even release a production plan, an earnings forecast, or any other kind of guidance for its next fiscal year because of uncertainty over when it can resume normal production again. And speaking of that earthquake, here's another update. As was reported extensively, automakers around the world were impacted because a paint factory owned by the German company Merck could not make a specific black pigment called Zeralek. But now that factory is up and running and the company plans to open another site that will make the pigment in Germany to make sure that supplies do not get disrupted again. Here's a historical note. The first public hydrogen fueling station in the U.S. fed directly from an existing hydrogen pipeline opened yesterday. It's a collaborative effort between Toyota, Air Products, Shell, South Coast Air Quality Management District, and the Department of Energy. The station is located on property owned by Toyota near its sales and marketing headquarters in Torrance, California. The automaker is leasing the land to Shell, and Air Products is providing the gas, equipment, and maintenance. The government agencies provided the funding for the project. Funny enough, Honda also has a press release celebrating the opening of the exact same station as a place its FCX Clarity customers can go to to refill their cars. But wouldn't you know it, Honda has no mention at all of Toyota being part of the effort to open that station. The Government Accountability Office is doing its job. Bloomberg reports the agency is calling the White House Auto Recovery Office to tally up the total benefits of the GM and Chrysler bailouts if it's going to continue receiving money. It says Congress should consider not funding the office until it calculates how much the entire U.S. auto manufacturing sector, including cities like Detroit, gained from all that assistance. Google is lobbying the state of Arizona for it to become the first place in the world to allow autonomous cars to drive legally on streets, the New York Times reports. The technology was prompted by DARPA, which conducts research for the military. It held several competitions for autonomous vehicles, and Google hired several of the top people in the teams that finished first and second in the last competition. Google now has a fleet of Toyota Priuses that can drive by themselves. No word yet on when Google wants to offer this technology for sale, but the fact that it's lobbying for legislation to make it legal sure sounds like autonomous cars are just around the corner. Very interesting report from Wards. It says making hybrid cars is very low on China's list of priorities. Instead, it wants to accelerate the development of electric cars. And the reason is that China recognizes that American, European, and Japanese automakers and suppliers dominate the technology for internal combustion engines, as well as the electronic and software controls for hybrids. So it wants to leapfrog past hybrids and go straight to electric cars. But coming up after the break, we'll take a look at technology the EPA is coming up with that could slash the cost of making hybrid vehicles. What if we always settled for the first thing that came along? Then we'd never have gotten here. Introducing the Sonata Hybrid from Hyundai. The EPA has come up with a new type of hybrid vehicle that does not use batteries. Recently, I was at the EPA's laboratory, and here is what they showed me. So, so this is the UPS uh, hydraulic hybrid truck that we've spoken about, and this is really cool. This is a shuttle bus that we are preparing for delivery to our partners 
of the South Coast Air Quality Management District. They're an air quality management district in the South Coast uh, part of California. The Army is an investor in this project because they are very interested in this technology. IC Bus provided the, uh, uh, the body and we hope to put into service in a, in a couple months. And here you can see the different components of the, uh, the system. This is the, the hydraulic drive motor that replaces the transmission and provides power to the wheels. Uh, here are the hydraulic accumulators, carbon fiber tanks, a little over 5,000 PSI. The engine's out, but this is, the, this is gonna receive a HCCI gasoline engine which is very, very efficient, as efficient as a diesel engine, but with the uh, emissions of a clean gasoline engine. So we don't have to put a particle trap uh, on this truck because uh, Southern California has a, has, cares a lot about uh, emissions, uh, air quality emissions, as well as greenhouse gas emissions. So this is a, an outstanding partnership where, where the South Coast has contributed um, about $500,000 to uh, help build this truck. The, uh, the Army's in this uh, as well. Um, and, and we're providing the technology and the, the build-up support. So the engine would drive the pump, the pump stores pressure in these big tanks, and then when you need it, it drives it through this transmission that drives the wheels, exactly. and then as you brake, reverses regenerative braking, it stores more energy in the tanks. Do I have that basically you got right? It. Okay, that's great. You're part of our sales team. <laughs> and then you've got the HCCI engine because you can just run it at its sweet spot. It doesn't have to go through all these transitions. Precisely. So it's a perfect application for these series powertrains because you can run it at its most efficient point where it always wants to be. And its job is simply to pump up the pressure in these tanks and then and then the, the hydraulic pump does the rest of the work. And this kind of a hybrid can improve fuel economy 50% at a lot lower cost than if you had batteries. We've actually demonstrated 60% here in, in the laboratory. But in the UPS testing, uh, delivering Christmas packages around Detroit, they tested it up to 50% improvement. So we're, uh, we're quite bullish on this technology. Very interesting. And this is the, the same basic idea that Chrysler's testing in a minivan now. Exactly. Without the HCCI engine, so the HCCI engine is a is an innovation from from the UPS days, and this will have a, the latest generation and most efficient pumps as well. Very interesting, yeah. terrific stuff. So let me show you where we test vehicles. Hydraulic hybrids can be made for much lower cost than battery hybrids, and that's why Chrysler is working with the EPA to figure out how they can package this design into one of the company's minivans. And we'll have more on the technology we saw at the EPA lab coming up in the near future. Hey, don't forget to tune into AutoLine After Hours tomorrow night. We'll have Marjorie Krevsky with three of her models showing us vintage outfits that models wore over the last 40 years of auto shows. And if you'd like a chance to win a copy of Marjorie's book, Sirens of Chrome, you can enter using Facebook or Twitter. And you can find out all the details on the John's Journal page of AutolineDetroit.tv. And that is today's report on the top news in the global automotive industry. Thank you for watching. We will see you tomorrow.